Hey peeps, welcome to another Model Railway Village video. There's going to be loads of these, so just get used to it. <laughs> I've got to catch up, so we're doing at least three a week, at least. Um, there's obviously the actual issues, and then there's going to be the videos on getting the garage prepared and building layouts and stuff. Thank you for your feedback, thank you for your comments. Um, don't worry, the garage is quite safe. Yes, the roof panels in the garage are made of a source of concrete asbestos, but undisturbed, it's perfectly safe, it's absolutely fine, it's in good condition, it's not deteriorating, it's fine. To remove them and replace them would have to be done by professionals and cost an absolute fortune. Probably delaying the whole project by a year or two. I mean, is that what you want? I don't want lung cancer either, but trust me, it's perfectly safe. I've already had it checked out, it's absolutely fine, so stop worrying, okay? Um, I also have to apologise in this particular video because you might be able to hear a horny pigeon. I'm seriously going to have to buy a gun. Not a lot to shoot it, although I'd like to, but to, um, like one of the starting pistols, just to, just to scare pigeons from around the conservatory. Yeah, I could, I could just hear him then. Um, there's nothing I can do about it, I'm afraid. I've got to get this filmed, got to get loads of other videos done as well. But I cannot get rid of that pigeon and it's just sat on a roof somewhere going cuckoo coo 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 Just, you know, it's, yeah, it's really annoying, but <laughs> I'll just have to crack on, okay, and do the best I can. So apologies for that in advance. So, do you hear that? Oh, gosh, right, okay. Number 14. Um, now this is really cool because it comes with this really cute little wagon and I really like that. I think that's they're good. Um, also, I've not forgotten that you all voted for me going and buying a locomotive. Do you remember about seven issues ago or something when there was like a feature on buying a steam locomotive and it was just ridiculously priced, wasn't it? I mean, it was only like a Backman Jinty and they wanted 160 quid or something. Absolutely ridiculous. So, I'm going to do like a, a vlog video, um, a vlog rather, where we're going to go out and we're going to buy a steam locomotive for this layout and you're going to see me do the whole process and it's just going to be like a quirky one-off thing so I, I hope you like it. Um, right, okay just a few seconds later we're in the bag, we've got the wagon, we've got the track and the pigeon outside is still horny. So another ever so gently um, curved piece of track. What? What is it with this layout? Did, honestly, almost every single issue comes with one of these. Is it just the world's largest circle of track or something? Because I can't even remember the last time we got a straight or a set of points or anything other than a gently curving piece of track. <sighs> I don't know. At least we do get a really nice wagon and I am going to rip this open and have a look at it right now. Oh, that's genuinely quite nice. Uh, what's the manufacturer? Oh, no manufacturer. Just made in China. Hmm. Oh, I don't know, but the wheels. Oh, hang on. Are they metal or are they plastic? I think they're metal. It's a very cheap metal. Oh yeah, I mean, it's very cheap, but it is metal. Hmm. It's not too bad though, that's a pretty alright wagon, and I quite like these couplings. And I'll tell you for why, because these couplings are fantastic at uh, connecting like a, a really slim NEM coupling to uh, one of the big fat Hornby couplings. Um, I, I can't call them Hornby couplings, it's not just Hornby that use them, but you know the ones I mean. Um, I don't actually have any close, oh yes I do, here's a little Jinty, talking of Jinties. That's the kind of coupling I mean. So yeah, basically it acts as a sort of nice bridge from coupling to coupling. And I use, I use wagons with this kind of coupling a lot whenever I'm doing big rolling uh, stock uh, videos, when I'm doing big freight videos, because they're fantastic at connecting a really slim one to a really fat one. Do it without one of these wagons, and there's a tendency that the, the couplings can force each other off the track and or you get loads of problems. But a little wagon like this is fantastic, and it's really quite nice quality, it's not bad. You could weather that up and put a load in it and, you know, like ballast, coal, whatever you wanted, it's just really quite nice. It's obviously completely fictional because it's based on the, 
the whole village, uh, Little Benton. But it's all right. It really isn't that bad. Hmm. So, what's in this particular issue then? Number 14. Um, the Big Four. Oh, yes. The Big Four. The Big Four uh, uh, railway companies of the 1930s. Um, a model exhibition in Kent. Okay. Never been. Never been. Never been to Kent. Um, I must go. I must go. So, we'll dispense with that one this time. Um, oh, the, oh gosh, yeah, I do want to show you my fancy little tool. Do you remember my little gadget that I showed you in the previous video? Um, I'll just put this out of the way. Uh, here we go. This is seriously so amazing, folks. I really recommend you get one of these. It's by Rapid, and it's an SRE hole reinforcer. And it's so cool, because I've been putting all of these into the uh, binder, but the constant looking through them really does take its toll on these tiny little thin bits of paper there. And I know from previous, previous experience in sixth form and university that it doesn't take much for that to actually tear through, and then everything falls out. Da -da, da -da -da. Here comes this to the rescue. You honestly just put that little bit there, that little raised stud through the hole. Um, there we go. So it's like that, so it's clamped it, and then you just go... And look! It's put a reinforcer on! It is so cool! And you can get these, you can, it's just a massive stack of stickers basically, and you can buy refills. And the price is really reasonable. It's not going to cost the earth. Look at that! Honestly, this has saved me so much time. <laughs> it's cool, because before I was like doing it with like a ream of the stuff from WH Smith. Just not as good. This is fantastic. Oh, I love it. Anyway, sorry, yes, I digress. <laughs> um, I'm not on commission. Uh, I should be, but I'm not. Right, adding pavement textures. Uh, the printed pavements supplied in issues 12, 14, and 15 are designed to fit around the card panel that you have cut out. Um, in this issue, we explain how to apply the pavement. Okay, so you basically, I'm just going to save this until we actually start putting the baseboard together, okay? Because I think that's what you'd probably prefer. But um, I do have criticism for these. I don't think they're very realistic. What do you think? I think they're going to need weathering. I think I'm going to have to do something to them to make them look a bit more realistic. They're, just look at that. I mean, what pavement do you walk down that looks that pristine and that neat? Um, where's where the buttered out cigarettes and the bits of chewing gum and the you know the the, the sick stain from a, a night out, a hen night out or something? It's just not realistic. So I shall definitely tend to that. Um, but the but. The content is there. The instructions do look quite thorough. They are covering everything you need to know, and I do like that. Obviously, we'd expect it, but we never know with things like this, so that's quite good. Um, what else? Some sort of um, exhibition layout in Kent. Uh, no visit to the famous Romney Heim and... Oh, gosh, yes, the uh, Romney Heim, Hyde and Dimchurch. It is complete without a trip to the Model Railway Exhibition situated above the Haywood Buffet at New Romney Station. Buffet? Buffet? Um, okay, possibly the largest and certainly the busiest Model Railway in England. Wow! The layouts in the Model Railway Exhibition um, feature interactive exhibits and a wide selection of scale model trains. Right, interesting. I do think that one of these has just opened up in Norfolk as well. Um, and that's supposed to be quite big. But basically, the UK doesn't have anything like the um, the Minute of Wonderland in Hamburg, Germany. Not yet. <laughs> Do you know anyone, Will, that could possibly have the contacts, the power, the size, and the money to do something like that? Hmm, maybe, one day. <laughs> but um, yeah, this one apparently is quite close. This gets uh, about as close as we can to that. So I'm definitely going to have to go. Maybe even this summer. Hmm, because I've never been to Kent. Never been to Margate. Never been, never even been on a javelin, people. Never been on a Class 395 javelin. Uh, the um, HS1, high speed one. So I think a trip is in order. Definitely. Um, if you have been to this, please do leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Um, oh, what's this? The big four. Oh, 
fantastic. The Railways Act of 1921, also known as the Grouping Act, was aimed at consolidating Britain's 120 railway companies into four big conglomerates in order to cut costs and improve services. <laughs> well, um, that's going to be really interesting to read. I love history about the Big Four. Obviously, the Big Four, you must all know. You've got the Southern, you've got the GWR, you've got the LNER, and then the LMS, which was the biggest. Um, all fantastic companies, each with their own unique style and design. Just, oh, it's very, very nicely covering each one in turn. So you've got the LMS and then the GWR. And then on the back page, we've got the Southern Railway and the LNER. Um, I'm sure you've all got your favourites and I'm sure that you've got your favourite locomotives from each one as well. Um, I love all four of them. I really do. I love locomotives by every single one of them. Um, with the LNER, it's undoubtedly things like the A4, the B12, the B1. With the SR, it's probably the, uh, gosh, the, um, the Bulliards, the rebuilt Westerns. It's probably the schools class. And then with the GWR, where do you begin? <laughs> it's probably the castle class, the Panniers. Um, and with the LMS, oh my gosh, obviously the Black Five. Come on, folks, the Black Five and the uh, Princess Royals, the um, uh, Duchess of Hamilton. There's just so many. And I think it's really nice that they've done this and they've done a really good job of it as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to enjoy reading that. I genuinely am going to enjoy reading that. And that's it. That's all there is for this particular issue. Not very much. It mainly focuses on pavement construction. Uh, so, where are we up to? Right, you saw the garage. It's going to take a while for me to sort that. You wanted to see it, so I'm going to show you. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually sort through all of that stuff. If any of it is of a questionable quality, I'm going to list it online, I'm going to sell it on eBay, see if it will sell, and I'll tell you all about it, so you can go and buy something from ICH2's garage if you want. Um, anything that doesn't sell, um, well, it can either go to a car boot, or it can go to charity, or it can just go to be recycled. But there's some stuff in there that's genuinely okay, so I might list some stuff on eBay. Um, so yeah, watch out for that. Uh, th uh, thank you for all of your comments, thank you for your suggestions, your hints and tips, and for caring about my safety. <laughs> I really do appreciate it, folks. Um, I hope you continue to enjoy all of the videos that are coming up. There are loads to come. Yes, I will get around to the other layouts as well. Um, the Minecraft thing is holding everything up at the moment, but me and Lisa have just been so busy, we just couldn't get that very last episode done. Um, so we're going to sit down together and get that edited, uh, I think this week, or maybe next week. So watch out for that, and um, thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a comment, hit like, and I will see you soon.